If you're 21, you can have some spiked apple cider. Hi, my name is Candice, aka Picasso Baby, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own Halloween paintings right at home. Before we get started, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so that you don't miss the next video. And if you have any suggestions on something that you want to paint at home, please leave it in the comments so that we can do some painting through this pandemic together. Um, also, I would like to thank everybody that has subscribed and that have been painting with me. I appreciate all of the love and support, and I'm so excited to do more painting with you all. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own Halloween painting right at home. Um, Halloween looks just a little bit different this year due to the pandemic. So if you're going to be celebrating at home um, with yourself, with your loved ones, with your kids, this will work perfectly for you. So a few things that you're going to need. A canvas, you can use any size canvas. I use a 16 by 20. You're gonna have wanna have a few different types of brushes. I do use acrylic brushes, just some assorted size brushes. A water cup with cool water. Napkins to dry your brushes off on. You're also gonna want a um, some paint and a paint, a paint plate. I use acrylic paint. Um, you can use whatever kind you like. And I also am gonna be using the colors white, yellow, red, and black. And because it is fall and Halloween, I have my favorite painting sweater. And then I also have some apple cider. But if you're 21, you can have some spiked apple cider. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I'm just gonna simply start by laying out my background. So what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be using my biggest brush and I'm gonna actually take a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna create a bit of a wave here because everything above this line is gonna be my sky and everything below is gonna be my grass. And then I wanna create almost like um, a really spooky sunset so I'm going to draw a really big half circle here. And I'm going to keep this little bit of yellow on my brush. But I'm going to also add white to my brush. Because I want this to be the lightest part of my painting. So I want to make sure that this is a really nice white, um, light yellow. And I'm just kind of blending the paint out by smoothing my brush back and forth across until I get this section filled in. And whenever you're bl blending colors and you want them to mix really well, you want to kind of move at a bit of a quicker pace only because with acrylic paint, it does dry kind of quick. Um, so you want to make sure that you're blending the colors together before it has a chance to dry. Now what I'm going to start to do around this, sun, uh, around this um, sun going down, I am going to start to pick up a little bit of yellow but I'm gonna also add some red to my brush now I haven't washed it so I'm allowing all of these colors to kind of blend around each other and I'm just gonna go right around my Sun here and as you can see it is blending out to an orange and that's exactly what we want again we are going for more of a spooky sunset so we want it to go to an orange and i'm going to continue to pick up yellow and red and as i'm moving out i want it to start to get a bit darker so as you start to move out towards the edges you want it to get darker so add more red to your brush and still Make sure you're blending it out and allowing all of those colors to really mix into each other. And I'm going to keep doing the same thing on this side here. But one thing I am going to do, I'm going to leave a little bit of space in each of my corners because I want those to be my darkest area. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space there. And 
And what I'm going to do for those corners, I'm going to pick up red. So I'm keeping that red on my brush. But this time, I'm going to add a really, really small amount of black. You don't want to use too much black because it will turn dark really quickly. So I'm adding a small amount of black to get almost like a burgundy color in the corners. And also because you have that orange on your, well, the orange mixture on your brush still too, it's going to give you like a little hint of brown. So again, I'm picking up a little more of that red and black mixture and I'm just allowing it to mix right in the corners. And once you have that in there, um, we are going to go back and add a little more colors, a little more layers. But we want this first layer to dry first. So while we're while that's drying, I'm just going to dip right into my black. I still didn't wash my brush off. I'm going to dip right into my black and fill in this grass area. And I'm going right over that yellow line that we started with. And then I'm just getting this completely filled in. Just completely filled. And if you have other colors on your brush still, they will blend out into the black. So don't you don't have to worry about washing your brush. Just let those colors kind of blend into that black. Just make sure you're smoothing it out very evenly. Perfect. And once you have that on there, we are going to go back and add just a few details before it starts to dry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a medium brown brush. And I'm going to actually take a little bit of white first. I'm going to take some white. And right in the middle of my sun, I'm going to start a bit of a swirl line. And I'm just taking that line out. And now I'm going to mix up on my plate. I'm going to mix up a little bit of orange. So I'm going to mix red and yellow. Still leaving that white on my brush, but I'm mixing up red and yellow. And I'm going to do some orange swirls in there as well. Just to give it a little extra detail. And you can always go back into the white and you can add some white lines into the orange parts of the background too. So again, I'm kind of following the curve of the sun and I'm adding in just like almost like little white highlights into the background. I added a white swirl into the actual sun and orange swirls as, as well. Um, and once you've done that, once your background is completely covered, before we can add anything else, we do want to let this dry. So we're just going to take a quick drying break. Um, you just want to let it dry for anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes so that it's completely dry. Or if you're impatient, you can always grab a blow dryer and then we'll start on the, de the next details in just a few minutes. Few moments later, one eternity later, three days later, 12 seconds later, 3.28 a.m. 8.01 p.m. The next day. All right. So our background should be pretty dry. Um, you just want to, you can either touch it to see if it's dry or as long as it's no longer shiny, then you know it's dry. So we're going to go ahead and start to add in some details. So again, we're doing a Halloween painting. So I want to add in a nice little spooky tree, some pumpkins, and maybe even like a black cat and some bats since we are sticking to the like silhouette look because we have this really nice spooky sunset. So you can either continue using, go back to the medium round brush or you can use a bit of a smaller round brush. You just wanna make sure it's round because we are gonna be drawing in some details and I'm gonna use black. So the first thing I wanna decide is where I'm gonna be putting my tree um, because I wanna kinda of base everything else off of the tree. And I think I want my tree to be right here on the edge. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a simple line just to show me where my tree is going. And from that line, I'm going to create the tree trunk. So I'm going to start back at the top 
and I'm going to start to move out at an angle just a bit. You see how it's spaced there? And I'm going to do the same thing again, going in the opposite direction, because I want the tree trunk to be just a little bit wider than the top of the tree. And again, we're working with just black, so it blends right into this grass area. And what I'm going to do as far as the branches on the tree, because again, we are um, in the fall season, so most of the leaves are falling out, and we want it to be really spooky. So we're not going to do any leaves, just really nice branches. I'm going to take, from just from the top here, I'm going to take my longest branch and kind of curve it over my sunset. And if you lose paint, you can always go back in and fill it in. And keep in mind as you're painting, um, the more pressure you use on your brush, the thicker your line will be. The less pressure you use, the thinner your line will be. So I like to use a little more pressure when I'm starting it. And then when I want to finish it, I use less pressure. And I'm going to pull some more branches out here. You can even pull some little ones from the side. And even the branches that I'm pulling out, I'm pulling out little branches from those branches as well. And if you want to add more branches, you definitely can. Um, you can add as many or as few as you like. Again, I am just only adding branches. I'm not going to do any leaves just because I wanted to really have that fall Halloween look. So along with adding in my tree, again, I'm going to also add in some pumpkins. Um, now, I do want them to have, uh, if you want to, I want them to have the jack o lantern look, but if you just want to do full silhouetted pumpkins what you're going to do is you're going to just make a circle so i'm sitting in the circle right on top of the grass and if you just want it to be a silhouette of a pumpkin you can fill it in and at the very top of it add a little line for the little stem of the um, pumpkin and you can even like curl a little line outside of the pumpkin now if you want a pumpkin that has like the jan the jack-o-lantern jack-o-lantern face to it you want to make it just a little bit bigger same thing but this time i'm going to go in with a smaller brush and i'm going to make the triangles for the eyes mouth and you can make your smile or whatever you want it to do it's completely up to you now for this one you don't want to fill it in completely what we're going to do is actually fill in everything around our drawing so that way the sunset comes through the face of the pumpkin like um, a light or a candle would if you put it inside the pumpkin Just filling that in. And I'm going to, same thing, I'm going to add the little stem at the top. And I am going to add a little vine, a little curl there. And I'm going to add one more smaller pumpkin right next to this bigger one. This time I'm just going to fill it in. So I just did a circle, fill it in, add a line for the stem, and then a little curl there. 
Now, if you want to do a cat, um, a cat is very simple as well. It's just circles and triangles. What I'm going to do for the cat, I'm going to actually make the cat a little closer to the tree. And I'm doing more of like an oval for the body of the cat. Right on top of that oval, I'm going to do a circle. And on top of that circle, I'm going to do two little triangles for the ears. And I'm going to curl out a little tail. And now I'm just going to go through and fill it in. And you have a really cute little cat. You can even go in and add some bats. And if you want to add bats, what you're going to do is almost like you're going to make an M. And you can add the bats anywhere in the background that you want to see it. So I'm going to make a little M. And underneath that M, I'm going to do a bit of a zigzag line on each side. And then I'm going to fill it in. So again... I make an M and on each side of the M I do a little zigzag line same thing over here fill it in and I like to the ones that are like closer to me I make just a bit bigger the ones that are um, closer to like the top of the canvas I make those smaller just so that it looks like they're a little more out in the distance and you can do as many or as few of those as you like it's completely up to you how spooky you want to make this One more by the tree. And once you've added in those things, um, so those are pretty much the main things um, with the silhouette, the pumpkins, the cats, the bats. What I'm going to go in and add, I'm going to give some things, some highlights. Um, and I'm going to do that by still using my smallest brush, adding white paint to it. And for example, on the branches, if you follow like the shape of the branch, you can add little white lines to give it a highlight. You can do the same thing on the bats. You can add little specks of white to give them a highlight. I'm going to do the same thing on the pumpkins. And like if you, um, because the pumpkin is just a silhouette, if you want to add in like the pumpkin lines, you can do that in white to help it stand out more as a pumpkin. Or you could even do it in yellow. Yellow could be a highlight color too, since our sun is yellow. If you wanted to do it in a little bit of orange, you could do that as well because it is a highlight, like a reflection from the sunset. You can also, with a little bit of yellow in your smallest brush, I'm gonna give the cat two little yellow eyes. And I'm gonna do just a few little lines inside of the grass too. So inside of this grass area, still following that little wave, I'm going to go and add a few little lines down here as well. But again, that part is completely optional. Um, but once you have finished adding everything that you want, so adding in all of your little spooky details, you can definitely add anything else that you like 
But before you are completely finished, the last thing that you want to make sure to do is to sign your name. So you want to make sure everyone know who has who's created this Halloween masterpiece. Um, and if you would like to just sign it like in the corner somewhere, you definitely can. Whenever I'm painting trees, I like to sign it on the tree so that it looks like it's almost like carved in. So like I just put my initials right on the tree. If you want to make your painting say anything, like if you want to write Happy Halloween on it, if you want to write the word boo, whatever you want to add, it's completely up to you and your painting is complete. Thank you all so much for painting with me. I hope you all enjoy your paintings and that you all have a happy and safe Halloween. Please make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss the next painting tutorial and I'll see you in the next video.